this dude, my buddy, Billy Conforto, rest in peace, bro. He died. He drove into an uh, embankment. Oh, yeah, man. My buddy used to be gay. He was um, kind of a homoerotic kind of guy, and he was about 44, and he died, actually. Yeah, oh, my well, boy Billy Conforto, R.I.P., actually. And he, he was like a prize fighter. He was like a homosexual mm -hmm. prize fighter. He looked like Don Flamenco. You know who that is from Mike Tyson's Punch-Out? Huh? Oh, yeah, with a... Yeah, the little Italian guy, and he's like... Yeah. No, no. He looked like that guy. My buddy looked just like him, exactly like him. My buddy was but a sucks, boxer. Dick. My buddy did. He preferred cock, Nothing but he was also a boxer. But he was like the first gay guy I ever met, you know. And he was a boxer too. Hmm. And he was Italian. And he, um, Bam. yeah. And dude, he was like the toughest guy I ever knew. Bro, he could. I mean, he would fight you and then fuck you after if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's up to you guys. Yeah. But he was the toughest dude I knew, and he was a bus boy. He used to do pills and everything, and we were bus boys together. We were co bus boys. <laughs> He gave me some pills, you know, gave me some somas one night or something. I think try to maybe take advantage of me. I don't remember. That's a good thing about pills is if you did get molested, you don't really have to remember it. <laughs> That'd be like, fuck, you know, Whoa. give me back my little bag of coke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to fucking hear about this, you know, I'm trying to meet a nice guy tonight. Man. You dude, fucking. Hold on, but keep telling the story. <laughs> so you so and your boy would just inject each other and then be like, dude, you look that like was somebody fun. like everybody else is like, I'm getting a sex change. You're like, nah, I'm just going to fucking power. I'm just going to, I'm going to earn it. You know what I'm saying? Dude? I'm going to force it. Yeah, I'm going to get it medically I'm done, gonna, bro. I'm going to. So we'd pull off and we'd spend time like that. We would do drug. We would do uh, uppers, you know? You yeah. gotta work and, out, right? Like you can't. Yeah, like you guys were working out and like doing lay them. Lay around. You gotta work out as well. Dude, we were never laying around. I didn't know him like that. We were just friends. And no, I'm I, not saying you slept with guy. I'm saying that you like you know you gotta. And I just talked about this this week on the podcast. He died. He drove into an embankment on pills one time. But was that on purpose or he's like trying to party? I don't know. But I will say this, man. Whenever we were kids, we pull off the side of the interstate and just shoot each other. Good place up. to do it because there's nowhere else in the world to do it. And we um one he used to buy weed and then we all he also sold weed so i used to drive him across to new orleans and drive him around when i was young because he was you know older and had weed and then he'd pick up like eight pounds of weed dude so we're out there slinging butters and fucking huffing whipped cream in the uh freezer damn getting loose getting loose what do you mean working hard bro you ever been a bus boy <laughs> that's what you fucking i was did, a janitor dude. bro Really? At a hot job. topic? No, I, I was at, 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 a, at a grocery store as a janitor. Dude, you seem like the toughest bitch at a Claire's Boutique, dude. Have you fucking <laughs> seen this guy? Damn. <laughs> wow, bro. Bro. Well, most of my audience knows I used to bury a guy's shit in my neighborhood for free. This what? boy, Mario Rafino. Mario Rafino? Shout out to Mario Ru Dude, when I was young, they had this kid in our town named Mario. Maybe. He had a brother named Luigi? No, he didn't, dude. No? And Wasn't a plumber? We're going to leave that joke in. <laughs> um, but he, on, You'd shit on the yard and be like, yo, Theo, come bury In this. his yard, make me hide it. And I was, Why would you bury another man's poop if he asked you to do it? What was the benefit? He would uh, defecate in his yard, and I was younger than him. And for us to be friends, he'd make me bury the poops in his oh, yard. No. He was not able to communicate well about his thoughts or feelings, and so I just remember he'd shit, I'd bury it. <laughs> and that was a, a lot of our friendship. That was the relationship. And so I was always over there, you know, <laughs> shoveling around. And his yard had a lot of silt. I think it was like alluvial soil. You so know? you were a poop bitch. I wasn't a poop bitch. I was a guy who would, <laughs> I would say I worked in like janitorial services. <laughs> I would say you, that. You didn't get paid though. And sometimes you get too many in one area, and he'd make you move them to another area. You gotta move the bodies. Oh, like I'm John Wayne Gacy <laughs> yeah, or dude. something. Like, but he was like always loud and like aggressive. I was passive, had a fucking shovel, and that was it, yeah. bro. That was our relationship. All right. I would say I was a colon concierge. That's what I would say. <laughs> a colon concierge. Yeah. Well, this guy would shit, and I'd have to hide it in his yard, right? But I probably buried 200 of that man's poops in his yard. <laughs> wow. I'll say this. They had one of the best gardens anywhere in town. I will say that, bro. Rose bushes, 30 feet high, bro. Encapsulating the house, dude. Just so he'd shit in his yard, and you would go and bury it. You know? And he died. And uh, <laughs> and he died, actually. He drove his boat into an embankment, which is insane. And RIP, man. I feel so sorry for him. He ate a bunch of pills and drove a boat into an embankment. And here's the thing. On purpose. 
Yeah, I think people that end up doing drugs and driving machinery at high speeds, the odds are against yeah. you. Doesn't mix. And I wrote I remember I wrote his parents a letter when that happened and told them about that. About about him pooping in the yard? And me burying it, yeah. I I feel like that letter might be framed at their house. And I wanted to be a pallbearer, I remember, and I because I in my mind I wanted to put him in the ground one last time. That was <laughs> <laughs> That's cold. That's right. a true story, man. And I wrote that in the letter and they never wrote me back, man. Wait Who went to car. your school? It's Sounds like a bunch of real degenerates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I was growing up, they just called them kind of wiggas, you know? It's like mm. we had like a lot of wiggas back in the day, and it was like... Dude, I remember the first wigger went to our school. I told you guys that before. The first wigger, this kid, Brian St. Pierre, went to our school, and he... Uh, and they don't have him anymore. They have a couple left, I think, outside of maybe Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. But he was like the first white kid that ever wanted to be black, and they'd never seen it before. They put him in class. He was class. a white dude that was trying to be black? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think they were so white. Like, it's everything's a spectrum. So I think if you get so white, you're almost back around to being black. They Where put did him, he move from? Nowhere, bro. He fucking just, you know, he was raised like, kind of like, you know, he was like Mowgli, you know? Like, he was just fucking spent a little bit of time on the other side of town, you know? And the brothers really got a hold of him. And, uh, and he was cool, though. He was a cool dude, man. Mowgli. Right? He was, bro. They used to call them wiggas back in the day. Went to our school, right? And nobody had ever seen it before. I said, any, but look, man, they put him in the mentally handicapped class, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mentally challenged. Is that what they used to do with wiggers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they didn't know. They'd never seen it before. Yeah, So yeah. they put him in there. What? Just a dude who had like a... <laughs> and, and couldn't he just be like, hey, guys, I'm just, this is just the way I, I want to talk. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying, Lee, right now. You sound like him right now. They'll probably put you in that class right now. <laughs> oh, Lee would be in, dude. <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying. This is in Louisiana? Yeah. Because he wanted to... Because he want, he just, you know, he was like such a, you know, he just acted so black. This wigger, so you'd have like, you know, you have like kids who are really had mental illnesses and, you know, everything, all the DS and everything. People were like, well, what's going on? You know, he wore like a starter jacket and stuff. Yeah. And then you just had Brian's, uh, just dribbling an invisible basketball, <laughs> just wearing a fucking, <laughs> wearing a Charlotte Hornets pullover, <laughs> starter pullover, Apex. <laughs> Dribbling an invisible basketball all day, bro. <laughs> just posting up mental kids in the lunch line, bro. And just, yeah. you know, blowing menthols <laughs> and fucking yelling at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, oh, man, we don't know what he has, you know? Is Brian still in the institution or is he out? No, he's out. Somebody sent me a picture of him the other day. I think he's in prison somewhere. He's in jail or in or out of jail. But they'd never seen it. They thought he was mentally handicapped just because he wanted to, you know, play with the brothers. Just so, so, different times. But he was one of the wildest locally. You know, yeah, because yeah. people didn't know what was going on. They're like, oh, we don't know, you know? Yeah. Science doesn't know. Yeah. And he was just, you know, nothing was wrong. He was just, you know, he bought Shaquille O'Neal's rap album and he just watched Space Jam all the time. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he listened to Boys to Men. He would just wig it up. <laughs> you like, no, they put the wigger in, in, the, in the special class. <laughs> That's who you sounded. That's what that dude sounded like. I wanted a dollar today. Leave like, me. He was like, like cousin it and shit. I'm like, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> And what now he's fuck? making a buzzing in the mics. Listen to him. He's the walking buzz over here. Oh. It's kind of, it was cool. I mean, we had a good, we had a good group of handicapped kids at our school, I remember. <laughs> wow. I so they had that. people that were really, you know, people that were just, you know, didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Deaf people, blind people that were. What was like? Oh, dude, I remember they had a deaf kid that moved into our town for three days. You know, this dude was deaf, actually. And right two doors down from us, handsome kid, too. <laughs> and this group of kids thought he was doing magic because he was always doing all of this and shit. And people thought he was doing magic with no tricks and they fucking beat him. Yeah, because he kept doing all those hand signals, you know, but no quarters, no doves. They thought he was doing bad magic <laughs> and they fucking beat his ass, man. Beat his ass, man. I remember one kid yelling, you mean this f ain't got no words in him? <laughs> I remember when I was, they had this thing for a while, and I don't use this kind of terminology, but this was called, this is back in the day, called fag fist fights was a thing, and it would come to yeah. colleges. Yes! And it was gay, it was a gay man group, and they'd put boxing ring at a bar, and they would have two gay dudes with fist fight. Wait, but it was it just like like boxing? Yeah, like the it was way just that gay they... boxing. 
and people would bet on it and shit. I remember that. Yeah, when I was at LSU for a while. You would pay to go watch it? Yeah, we'd go there and drink. You'd go and drink and watch. You know? See, college used to be so much fun. Yeah. You can't. You know, yeah, before you now, all this PC shit now, everything's soft. Yeah. yeah. I'd pay $1,000 for a ringside table to one of those right now. It was crazy, man. I can't believe it. They used to come to in Hammond, Louisiana. They'd roll through. <laughs> wow. I don't know what happened to that shit. It might have got shut down. It Cockfights. <laughs> yeah, it was cockfights, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That and, used to be great. Imagine trying to do that now. Uh -uh. Yeah, it's called fair fag fighting and uh we have well, two gay guys and it's to first blood so the first aids blood splatter we're oh, done damn. then we're done with the fight that would be rough now to get away Yo, yeah. but yeah dude they come and people would bet on them and then you can get you know pictures afterwards and stuff <laughs> different get, times different times man were they enjoying it in an erotic way? Did you think no, it was like a sexual thing? The, if there was anything straight left in any of them I think they'd beat it out of each other <laughs> Shout out to this girl, bro, named Big Helena, do we? What was her name? Or Big Helena. I don't know what her last name Helena, was. Helena? Big Helena. No, who honestly, no, I'm not joking, Tim. <laughs> she looked just like you, bro. And I lost a spelling bee to a girl in fifth grade who got pregnant. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> she was pregnant. Good for her. She was Whoa, in, in, fifth, in fifth grade? No, no. Yes. Fifth grade? But she was held back. She was older. She was like 18 in fifth grade. No, she was probably 16. Okay, right there. Dude, you grew up in the best they place. They checked as much as possible, 100% pregnant. Wow. What was the word that you didn't know how to spell? Her name was Helena, I remember. Yep, Did like, you ever make it to some kind of finals? I made it almost, but I missed on inconvenience, right? That's inconvenient. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be able to do that anyway, either. I'm like... <laughs> and she won the spelling bee? Yeah, because she knows all about and an inconvenience. <laughs> and she knows all about that. When you oh. give birth to your uncle's baby in sixth grade in <laughs> Covington, Louisiana, it's an inconvenience. Yeah, and then I started thinking about her and her child every time i hear that word you need to go down rabbit holes i know yeah it's really in inconvenient that's funny and dude nobody thought she could spell nobody thought she could even speak really. oh, no one thought she could get knocked up <laughs> yeah, either. That's true. jesus so she was a real overcomer <laughs> dude or just someone who accepted cum you know and she uh sorry about that part <laughs> right, you know, like, right. like when i was growing up they had a thing about us vajip and it was girls would put a uh, ass lsd in their vagina what? yeah and go hard. Yeah. A dick trip. Girls would have put a hit of acid in their vaginas, right, when I was growing up. And then one night, we got all... It Whoa. was like the girl was tripping, and then you get in there and get some of the trip. No, I didn't. Yeah. Would it absorb through the vagina? Oh, I guess oh, it would. I don't mind a trip, but I don't want it through my dick hole. That's that's a weird surprise. <laughs> that's a way. That's a wild. Yeah, that's a wild up, entrance. That's this was a fun school to go see, to. What this was, was a fun a high school. school. I'm just, this high school, people are pregnant at fifth grade. That's you. You got acid <laughs> in the vagina. You got no. Hey, heart, these are like hey, problems I didn't even know could be problems. I'm like, I didn't even know these things could happen. That's a front surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for jip. And then what? What was that? Fag boxing? What do you call it? Fag fighting? But it was all kind you of set it, up and i didn't realize it. it yeah i was at the age where it was all a show i didn't realize oh, this that. was like professional wrestling this was all choreographed yes it was all choreographed would there be would they sort of give you a backstory sort of like <clears throat> like 24 where they would be like here's why this guy's mad at this guy dun, 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 like that court show <laughs> dun, 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 dun. yeah like if griffin like, can't believe <laughs> <laughs> like if you watch griffin ate all of randall's cereal <laughs> they're gonna figure this out tonight <laughs> This is poor gay dudes who couldn't become dancers who had to just beat the shit out of each other in Louisiana. <laughs> I mean, wow. it was, first of all, it was just some of your people who brought <laughs> yeah. the business to town. Yeah. People got to make money. I agree. People got to make money. If you're Bro. gay in Louisiana, in rural Louisiana, you're going to have to beat the shit out of another gay guy. <laughs> you're not designing houses. You're not an interior designer. You're going to have to fight. And you hope that some fans come in who are vajipping, <laughs> some fag hags that are all vajipping, who think it's great. <laughs> um, do you think that you could fight an animal ever, bro? Do you think it's ever going to get to that? What? <laughs> uh, like a bear? <laughs>